Summary The Austrian Jewish author Ilse Eichinger is best known for her M. Mary. The Austrian Jewish author Ilse Eichinger is best known for her Kafkaesque allegorical short stories, ten of which are collected in the newly reissued The Bound Man and Other Stories. Originally published in 1953 and translated into English in 1955 by Eric Mosbacher, they are better described as metaphysical fables or parables, in which meanings are elusive and surreal circumstances are absorbed quickly and without much surprise by characters. Eichinger's themes have to do with her reaction to fascism in World War II. Although she and her mother survived the war, her grandmother and all of her maternal aunts and uncles were murdered in concentration camps by Nazis working under Hitler's so-called, final solution. After the war, Eichinger looked down on the way emerging post-war society focused on money and status. Instead, her stories revolve around issues of instability, the slippages and inadequacies of language, and the tenuous status of the aesthetic. In the title story, a man wakes up tied at the ankles and wrists after being robbed on the road. He notes the beauty of nature all around him, struggles to his feet, quickly learning to hop within his new limited physicality. A circus owner sees him and is delighted enough to offer the man a spot in the show. Soon, the man is the circus's main attraction, people marveling at the grace with which he moves within his bonds. The only person that seems bothered by all this is the circus owner's wife, who sometimes touches the man's chafed wrists and ankles. A wolf menaces the countryside, killing livestock. No one can find the predator, so the circus agrees to help. The bound man goes up a hill, where the wolf attacks him but amazingly, the man kills the wolf in hand-to-hand -hand combat. However, the villagers don't believe that he could have done this, so the circus captures another wolf and tries to recreate the event on stage. The man and the animal face off, but the owner's wife jumps in at the last second, cutting the man's bonds to help him. Not knowing how to move without the ropes, the man is unable to defeat the wolf, and instead just shoots it with a gun. The audience turns on him, and he flees as both circus performers and villagers chase him. He is free, and he soon forgets everything about this part of his life. The Opened Order is about a soldier tasked with delivering a sealed letter with secret orders inside. Unable to resist, he opens the letter and finds out that it says that the letter's bearer is supposed to be shot. Panicking, he wants to kill the driver of his jeep to leave no witnesses. However, he is hit by a stray bullet and passes the letter to the driver, assuming that this driver will now be the one shot as the order demands. The driver takes the man to a hospital. He recuperates in fear for his life, and for the drivers until he is told that the order was actually just an encrypted message with a different real meaning. In the advertisement, a man putting posters on the wall of a railway station tells himself, you're not going to die, as he balances on a tall ladder. The station is almost empty, except for a mother with a young girl on the far end of the platform. The poster is an ad for the seaside featuring a little boy with his mouth open in a big grin. Somehow, the poster boy hears the words the man says and starts thinking about them, wondering what dying means. Diving into the sea, jumping out of the poster, or maybe having another poster stuck over top of you. Meanwhile, the little girl breaks away from her mother and accidentally falls on the tracks. At the same time, the poorly glued poster rips off the wall. A passing train tears it up as it speeds down the track. In the fourth story, the private tutor, an hour-long babysitting session goes off the rails. Mother and father leave their little boy home alone, telling him not to open the door to anyone except his tutor. The tutor arrives, and he and the boy read for a while and then decide to play a game. The more the tutor loses at the game, the more he starts losing his cool, and then his marbles. Just as he is about to completely go insane, the little boy's parents arrive home. Angel in the Night is about the relationship between two teenage sisters. The younger one claims that when she is alone, she sees amazing angels something she says her sister could never see. Annoyed, the older sister snaps, yelling, they don't exist. They don't exist. You lied to me. This subdues the younger sister, who meekly submits instead of arguing. However, later that night, the older sister realizes that her angry outburst has destroyed something beautifully. Creative in her younger sister, she decides to apologize the next morning. That night, it snows, and the older sister either actually sees or dreams she sees one of the angels that she's heard so much about outside. She rushes to her younger sister's room to tell her the good news but finds that her younger sister isn't in her bed. She is in the yard, dead under the newly fallen snow. About the author. 
Ilse Eichinger, born the 1st of November 1921, is an Austrian writer noted for her accounts of her persecution by the Nazis because of her Jewish ancestry. Eichinger was born in 1921 in Vienna, along with her twin sister, Helga, to a Jewish doctor, her mother, and a Christian teacher. Her mother's family was assimilated, and Eichinger was raised a Catholic. Two, she spent her childhood in Linz in Vienna, where her family was subjected to Nazi persecution starting in 1933. Eichinger began to study medicine in 1945, working as a writer on the side. In her first novel, Das Vier Tor, The Fourth Gate, she wrote of her own experience under Nazism. After studying for five semesters, Eichinger interrupted her studies in medicine again in 1948 in order to finish her second novel, Die Grosser Hoffnung, The Greater Hope. In 1953, she married the German writer Gunter Eich. In 1955, Eichinger was awarded the Ammermann Preis by the city of Dusseldorf and in 1956, she joined the Akademie der Kunst of Berlin. In 1957, Eichinger won the Literaturpreis der Freien Hansestadt Bremen. In 1963, Eichinger moved to Grossgemeine, near Salzburg. In 1971, she was awarded the Nelly Sachs Preis. Reviewing a 1957 volume of her short works in translation, The Bound Man and Other Stories, Anthony Boucher described Eichinger as, a sort of concise Kafka, praising the title story for its, narrative use of multi-valued symbolism. 3. She was honored the German International Literary Petrarca Preis in 1982. After 1985 Eichinger increasingly retreated from public life. Citation needed, in 1987, she received the Europolia. Literature Preis, and in 1991, she was awarded the Grosser Literature Prius of the Bayerische Akademie der Schonen Kunst Bayerische Akademie der Schonen Kunst. Other honors included the Grosser Osterreichischer Staatsprius für Literature in 1995 and the 2001 Joseph Breitbach Preis, which she received along with W. G. Siebald and Marcus Werner. Eichinger is the aunt of artist Ruth Ricks.